A control chart is one of the best tools for tracking performance over time, spotting trends, and identifying issues before they spiral. It plots your data against a central data average line and control limits, using simple stats to show whether your process is stable or if something's gone off the rails. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to build this dynamic control chart in Excel from scratch, step by step. Whether you're tracking defects, sales, or any other business metric, this chart will help you stay in control and make smarter decisions. Let's get started. So the first thing that I recommend that you do is open up a brand new Excel workbook. And then what we're going to do at the top here is just type in exactly what this document is. That way, if you open it up or send it to a stakeholder, they know exactly what they're looking at. So in B1, I've just typed in control chart. A1 through to about R1, I'm going to put a light gray fill color. And I'm also going to bold and increase the uh, font here, the size to about 22, just to make this like a heading and kind of differentiate it from the rest of the document. Now you can use a different font or color depending on your organization's branding or perhaps even your own preferences. The next thing I'm gonna recommend that you do is just type in project name. That way, if you use this across different projects, you can essentially uh, leverage this as a template. So what I'm just gonna do there is actually, no, let's leave that as is. I'm actually gonna bold that and then wrap that, okay? And then we've got this kind of content area in C. Underneath, so in B5, what I recommend that you do is just type in number. And then in C5, I'm gonna type in date. Then we're going to type in value. Then we're gonna type in AVG, which is an acronym for average. We're gonna type in UCL, acronym for upper control limit, and LCL, or lower control limit. Then from B5 through to G, we'll go to about 20 for now. We can always change this. So I've selected B5 through to G20. I'm gonna click insert on the ribbon at the top, and I'm gonna press table. This will pop up. And then what you want to select is my table has headers and press OK because we already have the kind of headers in here. We, we wrote those out before. And then then what you want to do is just select a table style. Again, suits your branding preferences, etc. I'm just going to go for this one for now. And then I'm just going to change this to a black font color just so it's, you know, we can see it better. And I'm going to select from B5 through to G20 and I'm going to put all borders on. The next thing that I recommend that you do is just kind of give these a slightly different off color um, just because these are going to be, um, or a fill color, I'm going to use a light gray, just because these are going to be kind of stats that we use within the chart itself and we want to differentiate it from the rest of the table. So that's essentially what you need to do first. I'll put some dummy data in. So I'm just gonna put one, two, three, and we're gonna go through to 10 and I'll delete any other um, rows off we don't need. So I'm actually gonna delete this, we don't need it for now. So just select those rows and click delete. And we're gonna put some dummy dates in. Um, so this is all dummy data, by the way. So I'm gonna do the start of the current month and I am based in the UK, which is why I put my date like that for you. If you're in the States, uh, obviously it's gonna be in a slightly different order. And we'll just put this as you know a day apart essentially. So I've put that as my first date and dragged down. And then value, again, I'm gonna be using dummy data. You'd be using what makes sense for your particular use case here. Um, let's just put literally random numbers in. Minus one, uh, that should have been minus one. Minus one, uh, minus one, and then we'll just put three, five, eight, completely random. So this is the start of what we're looking to achieve. Now what we need to do, I'm actually gonna call this um, control chart demo. Just what you can do is rename that just to control chart. What I like to do is create a se separate data sheet and I'll show you that now because we need to build this. Um, so what you can actually do is you can place, um, let me quickly open it up. So we need to create this data or this analysis. What you could essentially do is you could put that underneath your control chart here, but I just think that gets a little bit messy. I like to keep it out of the way. So what I like to do is create a new, essentially a new sheet. So let me just create that now. So data control 
uh, data, I'll put date, data sheet two, because I've essentially already got one with the same name. Um, and essentially what we're going to be doing here is in this sheet, we just need to essentially list a few things. This is just, again, an analysis sheet. So data average, we need to have a data standard deviation. If I can spell correctly, standard, standard data standard deviation, we need an upper control limit and a lower control limit. So you just want to put that, that in almost as headers. And I'm just going to put a bit of a table on here as well. And I'll just put a light gray on like this. And then what we need to essentially do is run some analysis against the uh, initial table we created, which is here. So what you want to do in this cell here is we're going to be doing equals average. And we want to take the average of all of the values. So I've left click back into this sheet and I'm going to left click here and drag all the way down to the bottom. And then I need to put a closing parenthesis on there like that. So that's average. So essentially what that's saying is the average of all these values is 3.9. To get to the data standard deviation, what we need to do here is it is this formula. So equals st dev dot p open bracket. And then again, what we need to do here is we need to select all of that. Again, close the parenthesis, and that will give us this number here. Now you notice that that's given us quite a few decimal places. So what I'd recommend that you do is put it to, to two decimal places. So select that cell, and then in the home ribbon at the top, we want to just press this button and make it to two decimal places like that. So it kind of rounds it up to so three point. Three, six. Now to get the upper control limit, it is simply equals this plus this. And to get the lower control limit, it is the opposite. So it is this minus this. And it's going to give you the, this set of numbers here. So this is looking really, really good. Now we can start to build our chart. So if we go back into our control chart demo, now, what I'm going to suggest that you do is select C6 through to D15, or in other words, you're selecting the date, all the date, date, data, and all the value data. So select C6 through to C15 in this example, click insert, and what you want to use is a 2D line chart. So now it's created this. So I'm just going to make this larger, just so we can see it better. I'm actually going to drag it across to this kind of end here so it looks nice and neat. And we need to make some changes, but we are on our way. The first thing I recommend that you do is select this chart title here and then press equals. Now, what you can do is you can either select this cell or you can select this cell and it will bring that data in whatever, whatever is in that cell. So as an example, if I select B1 and press enter, you'll see it's changed to control chart, which is really, really good. The next thing I recommend that you do is just play around because as you will notice that this is a little off. So the first thing I recommend that you do is select this axis here, right click and click format, format axis. Now the first thing that we're going to want to do is just move it in terms of its positioning because you'll notice it's kind of cutting off the data. So if I click on labels here, so in the format axis under the axis options, expand labels and then change this to low and that will just drop it right to the bottom of the chart which is what we're looking to do the next thing i recommend you do, recommend that you do is expand number make sure that the category is date because we do want it as a date and i'm going to suggest that we change it or the formatting so it's instead of having like a the full year as an example it shortens it just to two numbers like that it's just better visually. So it's done that. That's great. Now what we need to do is we want to change kind of how that date appears because it's it's not very neat. It doesn't, it's not very good on the eye. So if you select this here, size and properties, if you put custom angle and if you put a number in like 40, you'll see it kind of tilts it. But you'll notice that's probably the wrong way. So if you put minus 40 or 50, then it will kind of angle it in the right direction. I'm actually going to go minus 50 for now. And that's looking really, really good. The next thing we can do is change the other axis. So if we select this here and then put add chart element, 
axis titles, primary horizontal. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Control Z. Get rid of that. Add chart element, axis titles, primary vertical, and it will add it here. Now, what we can do once this is selected is press equals and then value. And then that has been added in there. In fact, what we could have done actually is, I mean, it's obvious it's a date, but we could add the, we could add um, the title there. And then we could just do something like equals date. So there we go. So this is getting there. The next thing I recommend that you do is just add some, so select this and then essentially click on the fill in line. So select this main line. This is the, the, the data, um, if you like the values and then select marker, marker options and click built in. And then you can change this to the circle works quite well and you might want to increase this maybe one. But what this does, you'll notice it adds these little circles in and it's just really good visually. It helps you to kind of reference and see the, the data points more clearly. So I'd recommend that you add that. So we are we are getting there now. We just need to add our, um, our data average, our upper control limit and lower control limit. So to do that, the first thing we need to do is add that information to the table. So if you go into E6 and press equals, and then what we need to do is go into our data sheet and select here. Now, what I recommend that you do is put a dollar sign in here and press enter. And what that essentially does, the average is always going to be 3.9. And the reason why I put this dollar sign in, in here is because we want that to be kind of the same reference throughout. If I didn't put that dollar sign in, it would be looking in other, other cells in that sheet and pulling in the wrong information. We need this to be 3.9 all the way down. So that's all we need in this column. For the upper control limit, it's the same thing, but we're just referencing a different cell. So equals, and then go into the data sheet two and select this one. And again, we need to put our dollar sign in, press enter, and we get this. So the last is the lower control limit. So equals, go in here and select this, and then put that dollar sign in. And then we've got our lower control limit. So now this data table is kind of good to go. We just need to add that information to the chart. It's very, very simple to do that. Select here. So select the chart. Let me do that again. Left click the chart and you'll notice it shows the kind of data that is being pulled in. If you kind of hover over the bottom of the second column, left click and drag all the way across, it adds that data to the chart. So it's really, really useful. All we now need to do is just format these so they look um, better visually and also we understand what they're referring to. So let's start with the upper control limit because that's what this is going to be. We want to remove the markers for a start. So basically what we want to do here is select marker, marker options and then put none. Then what I recommend that you do is, so that's done that, left click on this again. We just want to format this so it looks a bit better visually. So we want to change the width to probably about 0 0.75, make it much kind of smaller. And let's do that for all of the other lines for now. Actually, what we could do at this point is just change the color. So if you select that under the uh, fill and line, we can change the color to maybe maybe a nice green. Or oh, this is this is the upper control, control limit. So let's put let's put a bit of an orange. Um, let's put an orange there. Now this is the the, um, the the data average. So again, let's just, I've selected that. Let's drop the width to about 0 0.75. This would make sense to be kind of a nice green and we uh, don't want any markers. So in here, select marker and we're gonna put marker options, none. And then let's go down to here. It's already on the marker, so none. And we want to make sure that when we select this, this, this drops to 0 0.75. Now the lower limit would kind of make sense to have this color, a yellow yes. So that looks really, really good. Now all we need to do now is just add the label. So very, very simple to do. So let's do this one first. So select this, uh, this is gonna be the upper control limit. Right click, add data labels. So click this one here. But you'll notice it brings in the exact value, if you like, and we don't want that. That doesn't look very good. So what we want to do, <clears throat> excuse me, 
is we want to select uh, right click, format data labels, <clears throat> and it will bring up this as the label options. So what we actually want to do is you want to click value from cells and it will this will pop up. So what we want to bring in here is if I left click, make sure we're selected in here, we want to bring in the upper control limit as the label. So you just select that cell there, B4. So press OK and you'll see it's brought that in, but we don't want the values. So if I left click that, remove that, and then also remove show leader lines. Now leader lines, we want to basically place this up here. And a leader line is that line there. I don't know if you can see it, that gray line. So if I may move this out of the way, you'll see it more visually. We don't want that line. It doesn't look very good. So just remove that leader line. So that's the upper control limit. So now we just need to repeat that process for each of the other lines. So left click this one, uh, right click, add data labels, add data labels, and then select it again, format data labels, value from cells, go back into the sheet. This is the data average. So just select that cell there, press OK, remove the value, remove the leader lines. So now we have our data average and we could put that maybe just below. Now we just need to do the lower limit. So right, uh, so left click on the line here, right click, add data labels, add data labels, and then right click on this, format data labels, and then value from cells, left click in here, go into wherever this that cell is. So it's gonna be the lower control limit here. Press OK, remove the value, remove the leader lines, and then just place this underneath. And there you have your control chart. And this is so dynamic because as things change in the table, you'll notice everything changes in here. So if I did that to zero, it all updates accordingly. So that's how to create a control chart. I hope this video is useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below. If you did want to pick up this template, if you have had issues trying to create this as I've been going on, then there will be a link in the description down below if you did want to pick it up. Pre-built, pre-formatted, right ready to use. Otherwise, over to you, best of luck, and I hope you have an excellent day.